Hi, and welcome to today's topic where we're going to be diving into attention deficient hyperactivity and disorder, also known as ADHD. Now, we're going to be diving into specifically the psychosomatics of this condition for children. Now, if psychosomatics is a new topic for you, then I would highly recommend that you watch the video, What is Psychosomatics of Children First, before coming back then to this video. And if this is something that you are already familiar with, and you are familiar with the psychosomatics, field of my research then you're going to love this and you will love even more also this big book which is about psychosomatics of children so it's a big book you can learn so much more also about different other elements for children so if you are a parent or if you work with children this is going to be a powerful resource for you and if you also just want to learn and understand a little bit more about your own childhood you're going to find a lot of answers in this book so let's dive right into this. So ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder that is also characterized by symptoms like inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity as well. And now diagnosis and the rates for it have also been tremendously on the rise with also environmental and genetic factors believed to also contribute. Now, what I'm going to explain here does not necessarily reflect on how well of a parent you are or how well you raised your child, but more so the aftermath of stress that was experienced by a pregnant mother and also perhaps inherited patterns and the potential impact on the developing child. Now, ADHD can also be inherited and the patterns that I'm now here going to be discussing with you can also be from a parent that is now being expressed in the child, which can be from a grandparent, for example. It doesn't have to be you or as the immediate parent necessarily in this case. So let's dive into the psychosomatics because here we are looking at a desire to eliminate and avoid difficulty, which is almost like a fundamental aspect of human nature. And this applies to children as well. Now, especially here in the context of a child's life, it's, it's almost like its difficulty often relates to stressors within their environment. Now, what frequently here occurs now is these situations is the absence of emotional connection and attention, which can also be very distressing for the child. Now, this lack of emotional engagement can actually send a lot of distress signals, leaving the child with a profound sense of feeling unwanted or unloved. And now how this works is when this is inherited. If the mother of this child or the father of this child or the grandparents, if there's a strong, strong inherited association and pattern of feeling unseen, of not having enough attention, of feeling that, um, that they feel unwanted, they feel unwelcome, they feel unloved, the stronger and stronger their sensitivity is going to be for developing this condition as well and or for at least their environment setting off the expression of that. So just looking here from a biological perspective, this reaction is actually really deeply rooted in a child's survival instincts as well, because a child's sense of security and well-being is intricately tied to the emotional connection with their caregivers, typically their mother and father. Now, during infancy and also early childhood, a child is entirely reliant on this bond for essential needs, such as protection sustenance, and also a sense of a longing to a protective community. Now, while this may not align with the intellectual or conscious understanding, it makes perfect sense from a physiological perspective. Now, the child's body operates on a primal level, prioritizing several survival above all else. Now, any disruption in the emotional connection with the caregivers registers as a potential threat to their survival. Consequently, now the child's body reacts by signaling distress and also stress responses. Now, in these moments, the child often also becomes fixated on singular thought and the absence of emotional connection and the fear of being unwanted or unloved. Now, this fixation can prevent them from engaging, for example, in the typical fight or flight response to stress. Instead, the stressful experience becomes imprinted in their body as a distressing memory.
Now, this innate need for emotional connection and security is something that we all share as infants. I mean, it's a very deeply ingrained instinctive response that's aimed at ensuring our survival during our most vulnerable stages. Now, babies, they lack the cognitive capacity to comprehend complex emotions. So their reactions are driven solely by primal instinctive responses. So as children grow and develop, their need for love and nurturing persists. However, they did not necessarily receive maybe adequate love and care during this formative years. Now they might find themselves in a very conflicting and confusing emotional space. Now they continue to search for connection, right? They're searching for that connection that they crave, yet they also simultaneously fear it. So the inner dialogue might echo sentiments like, for example, come closer, I need you, but don't come too close because I don't trust you and I don't know what to expect. Now, this inner turmoil starts to arise from a profound discord in their ability to form and maintain connections with others, and their early experiences might not necessarily have provided a safe and nurturing environment for them to explore the depths of this emotional connection. So consequently, they might struggle to recognize and accept or even sabotage healthy connections when they were offered. So when a child's fundamental emotional needs are not met, they may not have necessarily a clear understanding of what those needs are. And maybe those needs are met, but because of inherited predispositions, they don't feel safe to receive those needs and to have them met. So they simply experience a lot of discomfort and an overwhelming sense of like, almost like something is missing or unfulfilled. And this absence of emotional nourishment can lead to a very strong, pervasive feeling of longing and also yearning. Now, further also complicating their relationship with themselves and also others as they start to navigate the intricate landscape of human connection, stability, and also well-being. So there you have it for this condition for children. And if you want to find out more, remember you can find out oh so much more at Psychosomatics of Children. And until next time.